First off, uh, if you've been sleeping in a cave and uh, had no internet access, you know that uh, next week is Salt Lake City. So pretty excited about uh, the convention. I know we got a lot of folks coming and it's going to be an absolute wonderful time. There's going to be a lot of uh, getting to meet a lot of people. It's going to be a lot of vision casting. Belief level is going to go through the roof. Um, training, just uh, unbelievable. There's going to be some new announcements. I don't know if y'all caught on to what uh, was mentioned on a couple of things, and I got a little bit of a, a preview. I didn't get all of it, but I uh, got a little bit. Um, you might want to bring a little extra room in your suitcase in case you want to take something home with you, and that might be something new that's going to be coming into our lineup. So one thing that I want to do is anybody that's been in Kayani for two years will remember when we first started off, all we had was the Triangle of Health, and then there was a launch of something called Flores. When Flores came out, I'll be honest with you, everybody uh, flipped their mind uh, a little bit on that. And a lot of people slowed down and said, oh, this, it's all different now. Everything's completely different. We just got to start all over, and people lost their ever-living mind. It was, it was pretty funny. So I want to go ahead and give everybody a heads up that no matter what you're going to hear, no matter what the new product's going to be, any of those things, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to repeat it 27 times after the convention, we're not changing what it is that we do. The only thing that we will have is more ammo in our ammo pouch so that if somebody's got another reason why we need to help them, we'll have one more thing that we can help them with or two things or three things or four things. <laughs> so whenever you hear whatever it's going to be, don't freak out. Don't go crazy. Don't go calling everybody up and telling them about this thing and throwing up whatever the new two, three, four products are going to be on everybody. That's not what we do. Our system is built for scale. It is built for new stuff coming in. So I just want to go ahead and give that precursor that we keep doing the same stuff we've been doing before and whatever is going to come out, it's going to come out. Whenever it's going to be there, it's going to be there. We'll get it all figured out. You don't need to know it. You were able to have one heck of a month last month doing what we were doing. So keep doing that and then we'll figure it out as we go when they release information and tell us all those goodies. But I am telling you, it's going to be exciting. It is going to be exciting and it's going to fit very nicely with what we do and I'm excited to see it and bring some of whatever it may be home with us. Okay, so there's that. Um, there is a chat channel that we have set up just like there's a Kayani local, just like there is a Power Hour channel, there is a Salt Lake City channel, okay? And we're doing that so that that's going to be your local communication spot where if you're trying to figure out where something's at, where'd everybody go, where are we meeting, if we're gonna go have a picture over here, if we're going to this restaurant over there, um, if there's a line in the, uh, in the Kayani store to be able to get this or any of those types of things, that is gonna be that channel, okay? So I still want people to post things out on Kayani Local. Uh, I want people to be able to share what's kind of going on uh, for the people that weren't able to be uh, able to make it. But um, uh, make sure that you are in that group. Somebody could add Velma into that group. That would be awesome uh, if anybody's nearby on that. So uh, look in that group. Make sure that if you're like, Casey, I don't know what group we're talking about, then do what Velma just did. And if you are in that group, look around at the members in there. And if you know of somebody that's coming or you heard a little chat about somebody, it's better to have more people than less in there. So we want to make sure we don't uh, miss out on anybody. So make sure you are in that group. Make sure you're reaching out to people on your team uh, or cross line to you. If you know they're going, make sure they're in there. All right. Let's see. Beyond that, don't have any other big announcements. Uh, as far as power hour goes next week, uh, Mr. Jones, I was figuring we were, I know I'm not going to be doing it on Thursday. I figured with you traveling, uh, wouldn't be doing power hour on Monday, but I didn't know if that was a true statement or not. Do you know if you're having Power Hour, Mr. Jones, on Monday? He is going to have Power Hour. Thumbs up if you're doing Power Hour on Monday. All right. He's like, he doesn't care about traveling. We're doing it on Monday. So we will have Power Hour on Monday. We will not have it on Thursday because we're going to be at the road rally. Okay? All righty. Excellent. Excellent. So tonight's discussion. I want to share something that's pretty cool. So, Mr. Uh, Brian Pinso, Uncle Larry, as we affectionately know and love him as, uh, reached out to me, and there was a uh, event here in Houston uh, today. Uh, it wasn't exactly what we thought it was going to be, 
and we were both kind of like taken aback by the person we were expecting to see as the speaker wasn't in town and it was kind of both was like whoa 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 wait wait a second so we both sat there and we both looked at each other and I won't lie we were both you know a little irritated by, by that and what we could have done is just said eh, whatever we're out of here and left but what we did is we made lemons out of lemonade we knew we were in a new environment we were in a new pond and stuck around and made the best of it and I'm glad we did stick it around I'm glad we stuck it out I'm glad we watched what they did because it was so funny to me watching what this course was it was a success formula is what they were doing and a, a normal type of environment be kind of like one of our a DFYs and good night buddy three-year-old saying good night to everybody too um, it's a standard format where you come in they're gonna give you some value they're gonna tell you about all their stuff and then they're gonna offer you an opportunity if you want to be able to get in on this thing and what it was the short version was a class that they're going to be having in two weeks it was going to be a Friday Saturday Sunday and it was a five thousand dollar class that they were offering but if you act now it'll be one thousand nine hundred ninety seven dollars and it was funny I was whispering to Brian and I was calling the guy shot on what he was going to do next and what he was going to do next and what he's going because it's just the standard thing that we do but so that part was fun and, and I was I was stealing some good stuff and, and y'all will know why I was stealing that here and in, in, uh, in a couple of days probably about a week or two you'll you'll understand where I'm coming from this but one of the big things was the class was going to teach you the basics on what you have to do if you're going to have a business and I wanted to use tonight to go over this with you all because everything they said is absolutely right. As somebody that has a traditional business, Brian's got several traditional businesses. Um, I've got one traditional business, but the rest of mine are investment style or, or um, different than just your traditional brick and mortar type thing. But everything they were saying was absolutely true. We were finishing the guy's sentences for him as we were sitting there. And what I wanted to point out tonight is I want everybody to understand to, to get a traditional business started, the average cost is $65,000 to get your traditional business started. That's the average of traditional businesses out there. There's 28 million registered businesses in the US. 22 million of those businesses is operated by one person. They don't have anybody else extra with them. Insane amounts. And to let you know, I didn't get all these numbers from them. This is just me weaving quite a few things together. It kind of snapped into focus when I was leaving, leaving that event. So to do that, you, there's so much that goes into what you have to do. And, and, and the course that they were offering for two grand, $2,000, 20 hours of training, over three days, giving up your Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to go sit with them so that they can show you all this. And they're going to sell them more stuff. I, I can tell you how that's going to go. They're going to offer an online training course that's going to be a, a, an add-on. So when they leave there that they've had 20 hours of training, well, that's not going to be everything you need. You're going to need all these other things. And so they were doing all of that. And that's great. It's, it was going to be a good value of that type of stuff. And I was thinking about it. I didn't know how to, to do those things then. Yeah, but as I'm looking through, I'm going, you know, Here's the 10 things they were gonna train on. The first one, and you can write these down if you want, you don't have to write them down, but it, it might help sink it in. First one was, the, the first thing they were gonna train you on is how to review and set your goals. That's our why. So important. Doesn't matter what it is you're gonna do, need to do that. So they're gonna have a section on that. Business funding. Where are you gonna get your $65,000 to be able to start your business on average? You gonna to go to grandma, you gonna to go to the bank, you're gonna go get a loan. Where, where are you gonna get all this money from? Third one was product validation. You've either got a product or a service. So inter, intertwined product service, but the thing that it is, let's say it's product, you gotta have validation that this new widget idea that you've got is gonna actually work. That's not easy to do. You got a great idea. You think it's the greatest thing ever. Does the guy, that, the guy next door is who matters, not you, you ain't buying it. You're selling it. Does somebody else want to buy it? So there's a lot that goes into that, right? The next one is branding, being able to come up with a logo and the absolute pain that comes with that. It is ridiculous. You would think it would be so, no, 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 no. 
the next thing they're going to talk, we're on number five now, marketing strategies. How are you going to get this out to everybody? The next one was creating a sales system. How are you going to actually ring the cash register? Do you have a cash register? It's not the old days where you've got, you know, the little, the little key that goes in the lock and the little money tray comes out. You got to have a point of sale, right? You got to have some way to be able to run credit cards. What do you do with all those things? How do you go out and get that? Do you know what a merchant account is? Do you know how to go get one of those? Do you know what the charges are on those? Do you know what chargebacks are? Do you know what refunds are? Do you know what, you know how to put the little paper in the little thing so that you can hand that to somebody? Where do you get the paper from? All the stuff that goes in to that. Customer acquisition costs. You got a great idea of a customer. That's wonderful. You've got a great product. That's great. How much is it going to cost just to get them in the front door? How are you going to get them to actually look at what it is that you've got that this, this wonderful, fantastic new idea that you just came up with? That's number seven. Number eight, systems and processes. Are you a systems person? Are you a process person? Do you know where your keys are right now? If you don't know where your keys are right now, you are not a systems and you are not a process person. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that right now. When you see spreadsheets, do you kind of start twitching a little bit? You're not a systems person. You're not a process person. <laughs> I think Sherry and, and Mr. Jones might not be system and process people. They're over there laughing their butts off. <laughs> now, it's not saying that you got to be the one that's going to do that, but guess what? 22 million of the 28 million businesses out there, you got to be all those things. Why? Because you got to have employees otherwise. Now, we haven't even talked about employees and the fun of employees. I mean, it's exciting stuff. I promise. It's exciting. You should have seen, <laughs> you should have seen the, and, and Mark, I'm not talking about your daughter because Mark's daughter worked for me at my store, which was a crazy how all that come, but the other one that works for me. Oh my God. You want to talk about, we could have filmed that today and we could have put that on Jerry Springer or on, I mean, there's so many places that we could have sold that video to. It is incredible. And that was today. You should have seen yesterday. It was even better. So there's that part, right? So next one is corporation structure. Do you know anything about taxes? Do you know anything about LLCs? Do you know anything about setting that all up? Do you know how to protect yourself? Do you know how to have an LLC that owns all the stuff and then another LLC that actually runs the thing? So when that gets sued and it's going to get sued because we live in, we live in, uh, we live in, a litigious, I think that's how it is, uh, society. Folks, if y'all could pause real quick, I'm getting ready to get a big hug. We got to have one more big hug here because of the lightning and thunder. You going to say hi to everybody? Hey, say hi. Oh, no, we got, we got really, really, hey, we're going to turn around. They're still going to see you. They see you right there? <laughs> Bye night, buddy. Love you. Bye night. All right, off you go. <laughs> So you got a bunch of people that are suing people over the place. Do you have that figured out? Probably not. So that's why you need to go spend two grand to sit there and scratch the surface in 20 hours on all the, so if they're, and then the last one is scaling your business. So once you get it figured out and you get all these things to work for one person walking through your door, how do you handle 10 walking through your door at the same time? How do you handle when this thing takes off? Do you have all the stuff necessary to be able to build it up? You ever watch Shark Tank where you see these people come on and they're doing great, right? They're killing it. They got sales. They're answering all the questions and they're just, all the numbers are good. And then all the sharks look at me and go, why are you here then? They're like, because we got a big problem. We ain't got enough of this to be able to handle all the stuff that's going on and we're just, we're just stuck in the mud with this thing. So they're going to spend 20 hours with you for $2,000 and they're gonna go over 10 topics. That means two hours per each of these topics. Do you think after you get done with all that, you're like, well shit, I got this thing down. Let's go get this done. No, that's just classroom time. Then you gotta go figure it out. So you've got a room full of people and looking at all the folks in there and, and hearing their stories and hearing them talk, they're excited about it, but I was sitting there and Brian and I, we were, having, we were having a good time. I don't know why we didn't show up with whiskey, but we were having a good time in there. And we're just nudging each other and just like, he's going to say this next. And it's like, oh my God, did you ever think? I mean, we were having a blast. And when I got done with all of it, I was just sitting there just smiling. And I was thinking, the only thing out of that whole list 
that we have to do in this business, and the reason that you pick network marketing, and you didn't even know the reason why you did it maybe, or maybe you did, and good on you, but I wanted to share that with you all is, you don't have to do any of those things. Let's take them from the top. You gotta do the goals, right? Business funding, it was $599 to get started. And you actually had stuff for that to be able to get going. Product validation, it's been around for 12 years, 65 countries. All you gotta do is give it to anybody and they put it down their mouth and you get life altering changes in another human being. Product validation, folks. I give you wellness from the inside out. Go look at that. 72,000 people in there talking about what this has done. Look at the group just here. Half the people that are on here have had some crazy, serious, unbelievable, uh, life-altering changes as a result of this product. Did you have to do anything on coming up with that idea? Did you have to go find where you're going to get wild Alaskan blueberries from? Do you know where you're going to go get the broccoli, the kale, the spinach? Do you have a fishing boat to go out to get wild Alaskan sockeye salmon? Do you even know where to find a noni fruit? Do you go out in the backyard and go, oh, let me pick some noni fruit today? Unless you live in Hawaii or in a volcanic area, probably not. You don't have to do any of those things. All done for you. Not only done, do you ever once in your thought process go, man, I sure hope they're going to be able to fulfill and find enough blueberries to make the sunrise this week. Not even a consideration. Now, does ever once in a while one of those boxes show up and one of them got busted? Yeah, it happened. Do you think it left Kayani's headquarters that way or do you think the UPS guy did that? Next one, branding. Did you have to come up with the Kayani logo? Did you have to come up with the bottle? Did your bottle win the sexy bottle award? You didn't have to do any of those things. The packaging, all that packaging requirements on what it would have to be to do that in 65 countries. I would submit that the vast majority of all of us, if you've ever tried to go in and open your own business in your own county where you live, was an absolute pain in the ass. Why? Because you got to deal with something called the government. <laughs> now try to go do that in another county then do it in another state then go do it in 64 other countries don't have to touch any of that don't have to come up with the branding of it marketing strategy did you create any of those videos did you create any of those PowerPoint presentations do you even give any of those presentations Marketing strategy, this is where you come in. This is the one where there's overlap. And I'm gonna talk about that here at the end, I'll save this one. Sales systems, did you create the website? Have you ever tried to get somebody to put a website together? Oh my God, I'm in IT. I had 42 people, not the ones that bang out the code, I had 42 people that manage all the people that bang out all the code. I know what I'm doing. To get somebody out in the public sector to do a website, I'm ready to take a bat to this kid. It ain't rocket science, son. Come on. That's just to get it to show up with pretty pictures. You try to line this thing up where somebody can send you money? <laughs> then to actually get the money to show up in your account after that, that's a whole nother part. Sales systems, that's, do you have a little point set? You go in and you got to do your little, little scratchy on, on, the, uh, on the little screen there, the little Apple Pay or whatever where you, you use your finger to do the little thing. Do you know how much one of those costs? It's a whole lot more than $5.99, folks. Just that one little thing. And then there's a monthly on top of that for that little thing you scribble your finger on. Customer acquisition costs. Do you have any cost in getting a customer? Mm -mm. You don't have any. Maybe time. I'll give you that. Well, Casey, I gave him a sample. Okay, fair enough. You gave him a sunrise. 
Systems and processes. Did you have to come up with any of the systems? Did you have to come up with any of the processes? Nope. Corporate structure. What'd you have to do? How long did it take you to join the business? About four minutes. Six if you got a cup of coffee. Online, enter the information. Done. Scaling. Is there anything that you have to do to go out and have a multi-million dollar business that you have to sit there and babysit all of that? When they open up a new country to scale, did you have to do anything in there? No. You didn't have to do any of those things. So instead of spending $65,000, we spend 1% of that at $650 to just get started. And we don't have any more outlay that we have to do. When you open your own business for $65,000, that's when the fun begins. We're just getting warmed up on the cash outlay. Because you got to pay this thing called rent, electricity, internet, all those fun things, employee costs. It's not just paying them their wages. You got to pay the taxes on it. You got to pay Social Security on it. You get to match all those things. Workman's comp, insurance, all those things. You don't have any of that in this business. Why do you pick network marketing? Because all of that is done for you. So what is it that you bring to the table? Why are they willing to send us? So, so, so after all that's done and you sell a product, you, you spend your 65,000, you expand into all these areas, you do all those things, you're up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then when you sell something, how much of that do you actually get to keep? 40%? And you are crushing it if you can bring that home. Maybe 20, depends on what you got going on, depends on what you're offering. This business, you partner with somebody that's been doing business for a while, multi-billionaires. They don't just hand out that title. <laughs> the number of them, there's not that many. I get all giddy talking about I was 0.1% of my previous company out of 350,000. I was in the top 350. These guys are going, that's cute and adorable, son. <laughs> I'm in the 0.00001% of the planet. <laughs> that's who you're partnered with, the Hansons and the Taylors. These guys have already figured all this out. So all we do is we do that little marketing part. Why? Because we are network marketing. So when you hear the terms, is it perfect? No. Is it better than everything else out there? Yeah. If you learn how to do this part. I'm not saying you got to go spend 20 hours to go over those 10 topics and you got to understand you ain't going to know a whole lot more when you walk out after 20 hours in a class like that. I promise you that's why you're going to need to keep coming back and pay the next thing they're going to offer you, which is the whole system stuff that you need to keep looking at over and over and get a subscription to. And that's going to be probably a hundred or $200 a month, probably $197 a month if I had to guess. So that's where they're getting ready to go down that path. And they still don't know what it is they're going to sell. You've already got all that nailed down. Here's the one thing that you do. You have a conversation. This is what you do. This is the marketing strategy. We are the marketing arm of Kayani. We are a 1099 special little vendor that's partnered with this company. I got to tell you, if I had a partner like me to the Hansons, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, that partner part, we really ain't doing a whole lot of what we're doing, comparatively speaking to all the things that they have to do. But that's the cool thing about a partnership is if you can do one specific thing, it can make all the difference in the world because the Taylors and the Hansons, they've done their part. They've got all of that nailed down. But if we don't do our part, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how great your product is. 
it doesn't matter how wonderful it is. Cost is perfect. Shipping's perfect. Packaging's perfect. Taste is perfect. Quality control's perfect. 65 countries perfect. 12 years that they've been doing this, all that, that's perfect. Doesn't matter any of that. If somebody's not getting this in the hands of somebody, it ain't going to do nothing. So what is it that we do? We are the people, and they had a good quote in there. I'm going to find it because I want to get it right. There's, there were three ways that you could increase a business. There's three ways to grow a business. Increase the number of customers. That's how you increase a business. Increase the profit per transaction. How do you do that? You raise the price or you lower the cost. We don't mess with that. County handles that. And then increase the frequency of buying. So we do two of the three things that's necessary to grow a business. We're the ones that are increasing the number of customers. What's that called? Marketing. We are building a sales and marketing organization. That's what network marketing really, really is in the business world. The network marketing aspect of it, that part is the gathering tool, the gathering strategy for getting human beings to say, what you're offering is worth this much money. I'm going to give you a hundred dollar bill so that I can get a bottle of this stuff. I'm going to trade. Marketing is being able to get that out there so they know that that's a possibility. Let them know that we've got something that they need, that somebody's got something that they need. That's marketing. How do most people market? Most companies, they market. What are some of the examples? If you were watching Wheel of Fortune earlier today, somebody was marketing something on TV. You're sitting there irritated, waiting for Pat and, and Vanna to get back so that you can solve the puzzle. And some pretty little picture comes on the screen and then some music's playing and the music catches your attention and it's either intense or loving or whatever. And you look up and you see what's on the screen and it, it hooks you or it doesn't. One of them doesn't. You go back to Facebook, seeing what the cats were doing today on the internet. Next commercial comes up, more music. You look up and you say, oh, now it's got your attention. What's that? Do you suffer from not being able to sleep at night? Oh, I do. What is that? Would you like to bleed out of your ears, your nose, your eyes, your mouth, your butt, everything else? Some side effects may include dying, dying horribly, dying horribly while screaming. Ask your doctor if this might be right for you. you go, well, it might be because I want to sleep. Let me jot that down. I need to ask my doctor. Maybe that works. Obviously, it does. They spend billions a night doing it. What's a better way? Let's say you're sitting at a soccer game. And you're in your little fold-out chair, and you've got your coffee, and the sun's coming up, and you're watching the game, and mad at the referees because they can't call anything right. And the guy next to you, it's halftime, and you start up a conversation with the guy sitting next to you, and how you been, man? I've been good, you know, just working and everything. And I said, man, it looks like you're sucking that coffee down. You look a little tired. Oh, dude, I am dragging. I've been dragging for two years. Really? Tell me about that. Yeah, man, I got to find a way to sleep. Really? Whole lot better when somebody tells you what they're looking for instead of you pitching it to them, huh? That's another form of marketing. That's called, and what you're getting ready to step into is word of mouth advertising. Anybody know why word of mouth advertising is really, really important? Because it is the best way, even with everything else that's out there, it is the most effective way of getting a customer. That's why there's reviews on everything. Word of mouth advertising. This did this for me. And if I know you and I trust you, and you can show me some level of proof. And the thing that I've got that sucks, this thing you're offering fixes it. And I want to exchange the money for what it is that you're offering. I'm going to do business with you. 
And what have you done? You have grown a business because you have increased the number of customers. That's what we do. So I wanted everybody to just have a little moment, get your head on right, on what you've got your hands on. All the things I mentioned came with that box for 600 bucks or whatever package you got. That's the middle package. When you have that, nothing is magically all of a sudden going to start happening. The one thing that you do is you got to have conversations because this is word of mouth advertising. And unless you've got some special skills that you can move things with your brain, you're going to have to talk to somebody. Now, most of you can do that. I've seen it happen. In fact, I've even seen it happen between you and me. We've actually talked. <laughs> I've seen you converse with other human beings. A lot of you I've actually seen be able to do this with your fingers, and you can send something on your computer. I've also seen some of you use your thumbs on one of these, and that is the prerequisite to be extremely successful in this business, honestly. That's what we do. So this is me just another way, spinning this around so that you guys see it a little bit different and some different things start clicking in your brain. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys the four things that I'm constantly, always, consistently talking about. And I want you guys to think about this tonight. Let me share my screen here. It was funny. This guy was talking about taking a trip to Galveston and what are the things you need at Galveston? And I almost fell out of my chair from howling laughter because it's the exact same thing I say all the time. You've got to have, if you're going on a trip, you got to have a destination. Why did you decide that your six hundred, six one hundred dollar bills, when you handed that in effectively, you said, I'm going to trade you this because what you're going to give me is worth that or worth more. Otherwise, you wouldn't have done it. It wasn't for what was in the box. What's cool is what's in the box is actually worth it all, but that's not why you got started. You got started because you saw this as a vehicle that's going to help you get somewhere, and you know where that is. And even some of you will say, well, I don't know what my why is. And I've been there. I was there for a long time when I first started in this profession because I kept trying to think of what it was that I wanted, and I couldn't figure out what it was that I wanted because I didn't really want for much. There's a lot of stuff that would be nice, and this is all great, but true want, I didn't have, it didn't sit with me. So what I found was, what are the things that I hated that I did not want, and could this help me stay away from those things? And that got my juices flowing. That got me somewhere. It wasn't money that I was looking for. It was a feeling. For all of you, if you're trying to figure out your why, keep asking yourself, why is that important to you? What does that serve you for? How does that serve you? What does it do for you? Whenever you say what your why is, keep asking the question, what does that do for you? And if you'll keep doing that, you will eventually get down to something that's going to sound something like, because it makes me feel good. I like that feeling. I desire that feeling. I want that feeling. You've had that feeling before, or you're real good at imagining what that feeling would feel like, and you want that experience. If you can't get it down to that, you have not found your why yet. I challenge anybody to go through that exercise with me if you don't believe me on that. 
this is the first thing is that's your destination. That's Galveston. That's Miami. That's Costa Rica. That's Minnesota. That's the mountains. That's beach. That's whatever that is for you. That's your destination. The second thing you need on a trip is you need a vehicle. I just talked about our vehicle yet again. I told you how badass our car is for getting to our destination. You got to provide where you want to go. You need a vehicle that's going to get you there. That's Kayani and everything that it encompasses. I'm going to go ahead and say that. We'll just leave it at that for now. Next thing you need is you need resources. Because right now, a lot of you have a destination that you want to go to and you got a vehicle, but you still don't leave to go on that trip. Why? Because there's resources you need. There's two types of resources. There's internal and there's external. Internal would be being able to drive the car. If I'm going to go to Miami and I'm in Houston and I got the car, do I know how to drive the car? That's a resource. I need to be able to possess that skill, that resource of I can drive this car. The next thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need some external resources. I'm going to need some food. I'm going to need some water. I'm going to need some time. I'm going to need some money for gas and incidentals. I might like somebody to go with me on this trip. I'd like some people to come along with me. If you don't have those four things, you ain't going to get there. All of you tonight have number two. You got a vehicle. Some of you have had this vehicle. You bought it off the showroom floor. It's pretty. Doesn't have a scratch on it. In fact, it's got about three miles on the odometer where you drove it from the showroom to the house. You put it up over by the basketball court so it's out of the way. You didn't even put a tarp on the damn thing, and it's just sitting there. Why is that? Why isn't the car being used? One of those other three things, you don't possess it. The why, I believe everybody's got that. I really, truly do believe that that's there. But what happens is number one on your list there, that why, and number three, the internal resource of knowing how to do it conflict with each other all the time. I know where I want to go, but I don't know how to do it. I'll ask people a lot of times, what's your why? Well, and then you can see it, and it kind of flashes in their brain. They say, well, I don't have one. Bull crap. Here's what just went down. I'm going to read your mind. You've got a why. You just don't know how to get there. How did you know? Get out of my head. <laughs> we bury our why and we push it down and we push it down and we push it down because we don't know how to get there. We don't know how to drive the car. Now let's get into that for a little bit. Let, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the external resources, the time and the money that's going to take. I just told you this, the regular, the regular car is $65,000. This one's like your first car that's bald tires. The roof leaks. It's 650 bucks for this car. But the difference is this car is actually better than the $65,000 car. I'm just giving you the cost, not the value. The cost is so low. When you spend $65,000, you go out and you work, you drive that car. Why? Because it was $65,000 to get that business started. And you had to get that money from somebody and they want that money back. You cannot fail. When it's 650 bucks, I'll be honest with you. I've had some bad runs in Vegas that 650 bucks did not last too long in that poker game. 
but yet I invested $650 in this thing three years ago and it's done all right. <laughs> My previous company, I put six, I didn't put that much in that one. It was about 500. That one did all right. So it's not about cost, it's about value. And some of y'all are valuing this thing at 650 bucks. Why? Because I'm watching you not drive it. It's sitting there rusting in the driveway. So do you have the money, to the resources to do it? To operate this vehicle, not much, it's not much. You are spending money right now, you're using an internet connection of some sort and you're paying somebody for that. You were going to do that anyway, because remember, you got to look at the cat videos out on the interwebs later when we get done. So you were already spending that. So from a cost perspective, we ain't talking a whole lot. From a time perspective, let's get into that. How much time does this business take? Mr. Jones spends about an hour with you guys on Mondays. I spend about an hour with you on, on Thursdays. There's a breakfast of champions call. You could spend, you know, 30 minutes or so on that. That's two and a half hours. We're up to four and a half hours. And then once a month, we've got a, uh, some type of event typically, and you're going to spend probably six hours on that. So that's probably 22 hours so far that we're up to in a month on just that sort of stuff. And then actually doing the business, I will suggest that some of y'all, that was what you've spent so far on your business and that was it. Because you haven't gone out and actually done the thing that we do. And now we're gonna get to that. Why is it that you haven't done that thing? It's not that the system's not there. It's not that the car's electrical system doesn't work or the windshield wipers don't work or the exhaust system doesn't work or any of those other parts in there. All those work just fine. It's operator. It's an operator issue at this point. Now here's the deal. This isn't, I'm gonna throw this out there, but this isn't your fault. It's your problem, but I'm gonna give you a pass. It's not your fault. Cause here's why you were never taught any different. Doesn't mean you don't still have a problem, but we're gonna start there. I don't want you to blame yourself on this. I want you to recognize where you're at I want you to recognize where it is you want to be. And I want you to understand it's simply all of this comes down to one little thing that you don't have, which is an internal resource. And it's a belief in yourself and that you know what to do. Or it's an internal belief issue of you don't quite know or believe if this works just yet. Both of those are completely valid issues and reasons. They absolutely are. It's a logical, I, I will give you that it is a logical reason on why you haven't done something yet. It doesn't matter how many times we come on and we give a training about this. If you don't feel that you can do it, you're not going to do it. We got to have one other thing that I took a note on that I thought was pretty good. Bear with me, this is worth it. It was talking about why people don't take action. There we go. So procrastination. Has anybody ever suffered? Do you suffer from procrastination? <laughs> Come on, put them up if you do. All right. I'm going to assume the people that got their video turned off got their hands up too. So procrastination is a result typically of fear. At some level, there's a fear response that occurs. There's a little dump of cortisol in your bloodstream, which is the body's way of saying, don't do that. Something's going to eat you. The reason that there's fear is that there's a risk. There's a risk that you might not be able to do this. And that's because it is an unknown. So procrastination 
is a result of fear, which is a result of risk, which is a result of the unknown. <laughs> Colton tonight, while we needed extra hugs, because there's an awesome lightning storm going on around our place right now and around all of Houston. And I mean, it's like, you don't even get one Mississippi out. It goes, you see it, it goes boom. And it was like round top of us. So the three-year-old is about to lose it. I mean, he's like, he's not having a good time. The dog's doing better than he is, right? Why is that? I'm over here trying to explain to him what causes this. And you can imagine the electrons and all that and explaining that to a three-year-old. It didn't really get him there. <laughs> he's like, blah, 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 blah. That big old noise is about to get me. So to him, completely rational fear because it is the unknown. Something really crazy going on out there. I'm not used to this. This is unknown to me. There's a risk that it's going to eat me. It's going to zap me. It's going to blow the house up. I don't know what's getting ready to happen. So there's a fear that happens. And when that fear happens, guess what? He doesn't move. What happens when we're fearful? When it's the unknown, when it's risky, what do we do? We freeze up. Breaks. Flight or fight response starts coming in. You're here, it's like, I'm getting ready to fight something or I'm getting ready to run like crazy. Biology, man, it's just, it's, it's in the DNA. When you know these things, you can hack them. You can deconstruct them. You can see what makes it all work. When you're real young, you don't know how to operate one of these. And then after a while, you realize, you know, if I just turn this and then, I mean, the easiest things that we do now, you didn't know how to do that at some point. Some people get one of these things and it scares the crap out of them. They don't know what to do with it. Why? Because they don't know how to use it. It's unknown. It's risky. I'm going to break something and it's expensive. I'm going to send all my credit card information to the wrong guy in the Ukraine. This isn't good. Fear kicks in. Put that down. We don't need to touch that. It might burn me, might bite me, might scare me. Anything new causes this response. You got to understand that. Doesn't matter if you understand it. That's part of the equation. There's another part where you got to actually do something about it. If you can understand those things, then that will help you get to that last step. And that's action. You got to have the knowledge plus the action for it to go. If you don't have the knowledge, few people have the ability to take action. Typically, we call that courage. When people are shooting at you and you go do it anyway, that's not easy to do. When the house is on fire and you run into it, it's not easy to do. Fearful of what's going to do, I'm going to do it anyway. So do you have the courage to do this anyway? I don't want it to be the courage to do it. I want to make it where it's so damn stinking silly, easy to do that y'all can do it. And what's cool is y'all can all do it. Write this down. One conversation away. You are one conversation away from all kinds of things, impacting a life, impacting your life, changing the course of your family's history with one conversation. Watch anybody, if you're in Salt Lake City this coming up week, and hear the stories, they were all, every single person on that stage was one conversation away, and they had that conversation that then had that conversation, that had that next conversation, that had that conversation, which then that guy came on. And then that person talked to um, uh, Nicole, and then Nicole talked to Tracy, and then Tracy talked to Mary, and they're green diamonds now. One conversation away. You could have that conversation with Dave, and then Dave has that conversation with the – uh, with Kathy and then Kathy has that conversation with Andy and Andy talks to Jake and then Jake talks to Candace and Candace talks to Claire and then Claire talks to, Mar uh, to Michelle and then Michelle talks to Susanna and then Susanna has her reaction. It's incredible how it was one conversation away. 
It is simply having a conversation. So that's us talking about it. You're going to start seeing a lot of things happening in the organization because what we're going to do is we're going to take the model of driving a car. We're going to take the model of how you learn to drive a car and we're going to implement it in our organization. You're going to hear it called dump truck driving school. When you went to school for driving, you sat in a classroom, you sat there quietly, you didn't interrupt the instructor. And here we are in class. None of y'all are interrupting me. They'll be nice and polite. In fact, I muted all of y'all so you can't. <laughs> Don't teachers wish they had that in class? Let me push a button. Everybody just shuts up. This is cool. This is the classroom. And here's the deal. I'm just as guilty as all of y'all. I'm probably the worst one to blame that we kept doing power hour and just power hour. We just keep saying the same stuff, but here's the deal. It doesn't matter how many times we say it. If y'all aren't actually doing it, it doesn't matter. So how do you actually do it? How do we close the gap? We're actually going to do the classroom part. That's going to keep happening. You're going to see that in power hour, but we're going to start having sit downs. We're going to start having breakouts. We're going to have one-on-ones. We're going to have courses where it's an actual activity course. And it's going to be the use of that knowledge. So Betty just wrote knowledge. Absolutely. Classrooms are great for knowledge, transferring knowledge. It's people say knowledge is power. That is 100% inaccurate. It's missing a word called potential power. It's the stored up value of power. And some of y'all are geniuses with knowledge. But as Mr. Jones and I had a great conversation, your local crackhead has more performance ability than you do. Nobody get upset. It's fun. Your local crackhead wakes up with nothing every morning. And when he finishes that day, what happens? He gets his fix one way or the other. Some ways that he goes about it, I'm not a big fan of. But I'm talking about the result. I'm talking about actually executing. They do. We don't. So we got to get in the actual cab of the vehicle and driving. I'm going to share and we're going to wrap up with what I'm trying to say. And y'all know how I love videos. Let me pull this up. It'll be faster this way. Bear with me one second. Casey, can you say that again? Uh, the potential of knowledge? Yes. So knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. A battery has a whole lot of potential power, but it's not making the fan or the power saw move. The power happens when it's actually being used and it's doing something. The store of the power in the battery, that's what knowledge is. It's the storage of that. You've got all this. When you apply it, now you got power. All right, here we go. Bear with me another second. <sighs> Never goes faster than you want it to. Oh, come on. Okay.
I got two clips for you. What I'm trying you. to say is that maybe you can't approach this as a purely intellectual exercise. What do you mean? <laughs> well, uh, remember when you tried to learn how to swim using the internet? <laughs> I did learn how to swim. What I'm trying to say is that maybe you can't approach this as a purely intellectual exercise. What do you mean? <laughs> well, uh, remember when you tried to learn how to swim using the internet? <laughs> I did learn how to swim on the floor. The skills are transferable. I just have no interest in going in the water. Then why learn how to swim? The ice caps are melting, Leonard. In the future, swimming isn't going to be optional. So the point there is the knowledge of that and you never actually get in the pool isn't going to matter. So I got one more for you. Can your website clone visitors? Mine can. So every time you get a visitor, you would get two. Okay, that's it. Let's boot it up. Booting. This is a state-of-the-art simulator. I adapted. Okay, no, hey, that's it. Let's boot it up. Booting. This is a state-of-the-art simulator. I adapted it from something a friend of mine designed for the Army. Is that why I appear to be in downtown Fallujah behind the wheel of an up-armored Humvee? <laughs> I haven't configured it yet. Uh, let's see. Bradley Tank. Transport truck Batmobile. Oh no! <laughs> Here we go. Red 2006 Ford Taurus on the streets of Pasadena. Mm. <laughs> what? Statistically, red cars are stopped by police far more often than any other color. Not only hassles with the fuzz. <laughs> Fine. What color do you want? You know the pale blue of Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. <laughs> Before it was digitally remastered. Black it is. <laughs> okay, now what you want to do first is turn on the ignition and shift in the drive. I haven't fastened my seatbelt yet. This is some of y'all when we're talking about actually doing this. <laughs> Are there airbags? You don't need airbags. Dude, what does a simulated van rear ends me? I'll hit you in the face with a pillow. <laughs> okay, now shift in the drive. Pull out slowly into traffic. Galleria. I don't know. I was on the Pasadena freeway and missed my exit, flew off the overpass, and one thing led to another. Maybe you want to give it a rest and try again tomorrow. No. I quit. Oh, the next door. Remind me to compliment while it's on the software. It's amazingly detailed. All right. <laughs> I couldn't find anything that would be any better than that if I looked for a right, thousand years. Of year okay, this is the S&P 500 stock market. All right, there we go. I couldn't find anything that would beat that ever. So what's the lesson other than that was fun and humorous and entertaining? Classroom style. Power hour is classroom. Regional is classroom.
Road to Jade's classroom. Going to Salt Lake City. Going to be a lot of classroom. There'll be a little bit of driving. That's the learning to swim on the internet. Y'all are learning to do network marketing on the internet right now. I want y'all to actually be in the second video where you're actually there doing this thing. Notice he had a whole bunch of people there to support him. But then, and he did it. He wrecked it pretty bad. Air, airbag deployed. He keeps doing it on his own. Nobody there to help him. Nobody there to be able to give him feedback. No review. What the hell happened? How are you on the second floor of the mall? Missed my exit. One thing led to another. You don't want to know. How is it that you talk to them for three hours explaining this to them? <laughs> y'all have all done it, and I've done it 10 times more than y'all have, okay? And then finally, mm, that's it. I quit. And they don't go driving anymore. Why? Because he doesn't know how. So it's a whole lot better. And when you think back on when you were doing driving at driving school, you actually got in the car. You had an instructor riding shotgun, AKA shooters, with two people in the back with you, just as scared out of their mind as you are because you're the one driving. But somehow we all made it. We're here now. And now you know how to drive, eat a burger, apply makeup, talk on the phone, and have a big goal all at the same time. That's the part that's missing. That's the only part that's missing. Well, what if I, what if I run over a puppy? It's going to happen. Are you going to let that fear of maybe a conversation doesn't go so right to keep you from delivering what it is that we have the potential to give somebody? You know what these products do. Are you going to let your fear keep you from sharing this? And I understand I can say that all day long and you're going to say, oh no, I'm not going to let it, but yeah, I'm going to deep down. I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it hold me back. And I get that. And it's really snapped into focus. That's the part where we take the, take the freaking leash off this thing. This is where we increase it from a business perspective and we increase the growth of the business, your business. How? By adding new customers. How do you do that? By having conversations. How do you have conversations? You have conversations, but we're going to help you with that because I can say that all day long too, and it doesn't matter. We're gonna have people get with you, but you had to show up to the actual driving event. You went to the classroom, no problem, but did you show up when it was time to drive the car? That's, that's on you. If you don't show up and I'm sitting shotgun and we got people in the back to go with us and you don't show up to drive the car, you're going to be right where you've been. So know that when you're with us, we ain't going to run over anybody. We're going to show you how to do it exactly. We're going to do it, but you got to show up with us. You're going to notice, because I've had this chat with the shooters, and you're going to see some things in Salt Lake. You're going to see so much over the next couple months, folks. I'm giddy. I mean, giddy. If you look at the number of hours I'm spending, if you look at the personal development line underneath Casey's name, you will see five and six hours a day I'm spending on this, on what I'm putting into place for all of us that is going to be absolute next level. Because we tested all the other stuff out. This last little part is insane. While that's being done, while that's being built, and you're going to hear about all this in Salt Lake, while all that's in progress, in parallel, you guys are going to do the one thing, the only thing that you got to do is drive that dump truck around and we're going to sit in there with you to do it. So when you hear the call for that, take every advantage to show up to dump truck driving school and not just going into the classroom, but actually getting out there and doing it. Reach out and say, hey, would anybody be up for giving me a private lesson? I promise you every shooter 
in my organization and me as well will be completely up for doing that. Well, Casey, I live in Canada and you guys are in Houston. We got this cool little thing called Zoom where we can do that simulation just like Sheldon was doing in that little picture right there. We can do all that for real life. We can drive it like a drone. Sit down with coffee, come over to a house, go to a training where it's actually an action event, not just a training event. Get yourself there. If you don't do that, you might as well have kept your 650 bucks. But if you will do that, you'll be able to reach that destination that you come up with. I hope this resonates with you guys. If you got any questions, let me know, reach out to me. If you're ready to start driving that, reach out to your shooter, reach out to your sponsor, work that way up until you get to one of us. And if you don't know who that is, just reach out to me directly. And I'll point you in the right direction on who you need to talk to and they will get with you. Well, Casey, I don't like them. They didn't treat me well. I'm good with that. Call me straight up. I'll work with you directly. Casey, I don't like you. I don't want to work with you. Who else we got? We got somebody. Just get with us. We'll find somebody. Okay. With that, eight minutes over, but hopefully it was worth it because those were funny clips. I had to get those in. All right. I'm going to unmute the lines. Monday's going to be power hour, but between now and then, on your phone, go to Messenger, say hi, how are you? If you need help with that, and I mean this, reach out to somebody and let us help you with that. All right, everybody, thanks for joining. You'll have a great night. We'll see everybody in Salt Lake City. You'll have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Good night, John Boy. Good night. Good night, thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Thank you. Toodaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Uncle Larry. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, Casey. Thank you, Benny. Are you free tomorrow? Set up a uh, three-way chat with me. My days are always crazy. I know. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So the way to do it is just set up a three-way chat, and then I will schedule it with your prospect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Great work getting it to there. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Have a good one.